Guys, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about hydraulics this morning, and the intent here is to get you, um, hopefully give you some practice trying to understand how to figure out the hydraulics, because it's kind of complicated. Uh, but there's a method you can use, uh, identifying circuits, um, looking at the position of the valves, understanding how the pressure in the circuits is affecting the position of the valves, and understanding what the valves are doing. Because uh, you know, valves are usually uh, going to be positioned to shuttle a fluid to another passage. Uh, so we'll look at, to start off with, we'll look at the, uh, the pressure regulator valve on here. Let me get my TV going here. And if you have your blue books, or you can open them up on, on uh, PSI. PSI, you can follow along, but I'm going to put it up here on the screen in any case. I'm going to start by looking at the pump circuit, if I can get this to work. No. Ah, uh, yes. 6070, yes. I'm sorry. Gen 2? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. The Gen 2 is what I'm using. There's some differences in the Gen 1, but... Not a whole lot? Um, not in terms of function. In terms of quality of fire? But in terms of some hydraulic changes they made, there are, but they work in a similar fashion that we're going to be discussing. So the pump that you're looking at here is a vane type variable displacement pump, just like on, on the, uh, and that's vane, V-A-N-E, not V-E-I-N, guys. Variable displacement. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, the obvious answer, right? It's going to vary the displacement. Yeah, it, it's variable displacement, and by varying the displacement, by pumping different amounts of fluid, we can control the pressure. Because if we pump, you know, pressure is only created from uh, pumping. You know, if, if this is my pump, and I got suction here coming in, fluid coming in, and I'm pumping it out, and it's just pulling out into the bottom of the pan here. Is there going to be any pressure here? No, it's going to be zero. But if I put a little restriction right here, then are we going to build up some pressure? Yeah. So pressure is only created by the pump pushing fluid against a bunch of restrictions in the transmission. And these are a bunch of leaks. The inside of the transmission is leaking all over the place. And it has to. We need that fluid to be moving past valve lands and be moving through clutches to dissipate heat, to pull heat away, and to clean the components. That's one of the functions of transmission fluid. So the amount of pressure we build up is going to depend on the volume of fluid being pumped versus the rate of leakage. If no fluid leaks out, we're going to have really high pressure. If we have a lot of leakage past all those leakage points, uh, then we're going to have lower pressure. And if we try to pump more volume of fluid uh, you know, uh, against all those leakage points, then the pressure is going to go up again. So we can control the pressure by controlling the volume of fluid we're pumping. So it's a variable displacement pump. We gotta control, figure out a way to control the displacement of the pump though, based on the needs of the vehicle, and the needs of the driver, and the needs of the transmission. So uh, what we use to control the pump is a pressure control solenoid, a uh, line pressure control solenoid, and we use some that is controlled by the TCM, and, or the TECM in this case, and we need some inputs. The two major inputs for uh, pressure is the TPS and the vehicle speed sensor. Now other inputs will also affect this pressure. Uh, uh, temperature will, the temperature of the transmission fluid, the temperature of the engine, uh, mass, airflow, math will all have play a role 
in this pressure, but the primary input for line pressure control is the TPS, the throttle position sensor. And it's going to be an inverse input to current flow through our pressure control solenoid. So as TPS goes up, as, as we open up the throttle, the current through our TPS is going to go down, and you'll see why. So it's a direct inverse relationship between the two. So we have a vein type variable displacement pump, and look at how it's controlled. As we start up the vehicle, and the um, in this case, the, the um, torque converter housing starts rotating, it's going to drive a sprocket uh, that is uh, kind of tang to, or, or it's, again, it's uh, engaging a flat on the torque converter hub. So that sprocket's going to rotate, it's going to rotate a chain, which is going to drive our pump and our inner rotor. So we have a chain driving this particular pump. Once the rotor starts rotating, the space in between the veins is going to get larger as it moves away from the suction side. That creates the low pressure area that allows atmospheric pressure to push the uh, uh, transmission fluid from the sump up through the screen into the pump. And then we continue to carry that fluid around uh, between the veins of the pump and the space between the veins gets smaller. And as it gets smaller, we're essentially compressing or trying to compress uh, the fluid. Instead, we're pumping it out uh, into our various hydraulic circuits. And again, the pressure is created because of what? Pushing against some more physical restrictions. Okay, pushing against a bunch of restrictions. Uh, so, so that's what creates our, our, our pressure. The fluid is coming out of our pump as line fluid. So no, pay attention to the, what GM, how, how they name these fluid passages, uh, because that helps tell you what they do. So it comes out as line fluid, and it goes to a couple of places. One, it goes to the back side of the pressure regulator valve through orifice number four, which is located in this spacer plate. Uh, and how, how do we know, how did we find out where that orifice is located? If you wanted to find that, it'd be kind of important to find if you had a pressure problem, wouldn't it? So how, how would you go and find out where that orifice is? What did I tell you guys previously? No? You don't? Well, you could find it in SI. Glossary. Remember this? Those pages way in the back of the book? This is going to show you where all those orifices are. Uh, now you've got to be patient to find that number four orifice. It's in the spacer plate, uh, and it's going to tell you here, this is the control valve body channel plate. Uh, control valve body spacer plate. So you want to identify which spacer plate it is in, and then uh, you're going to search through here to find number four orifice. Because if number four orifice is plugged, how is that going to affect things? Well, that's the question that I need you to answer. Let me go back, if I can find my page again. You won't get any pressure in the pressure regulator valve. Uh, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, you're, you're thinking about it correctly, but let's look at that. When you're looking at the one side of the valve, if it goes around there, past four to five, line pressure still goes into one. Okay, hold, hold that thought, Robert. Nice. So let's talk about this a bit, and then tell me if you, what you think then. So there's our number four orifice. Line fluid's going to the back side of the valve. Uh, before it went to the back side of the valve, or actually, at the same time, but this, this passage here has no orifice, you notice, so the fluid's going to be able to pass easily to the pressure regulator valve here, and from here it's going to feed two circuits. What two circuits? Decrease and... Very good. Decrease and... Something feed. Conver forward. Converter feed. Yeah, yeah converter feed. Uh, so it feeds decrease passage right past that little land right here. Um, and... As it does, this decreased fluid is going to flow down in between the uh, the uh, uh, the slide of the pump, pushing the slide over uh, to uh, decrease our volume of fluid. I guess I really should have started over here because this is how it's going to be initially when we start it up. Notice that decreases is blocked off right here, right? Yeah. 
but as lime fluid passes through number four orifice, it's gonna push this valve, uh, pressure regulator valve down against spring pressure and against this PCS line pressure uh, and allow line fluid to feed into our decrease passage. So we're gonna decrease the volume of the pump. Initially, when we start it up, because there's no pressure at the, in the system right there, uh, we're gonna be at maximum displacement initially. And as, we, as, as the pressure builds up, we're gonna push our pressure regulator, regulator valve down the bore, which is gonna allow us to feed into some, some decreased passage. Notice that even before we move the valve, we are getting fluid flowing into our converted feed passage once the pump starts. And then also notice that we have a number five orifice here that also feeds this circuit. So we're, we're feeding that circuit through the orifice just to kind of keep it filled all the time which is a technique we use throughout the transmission. You're gonna find little passages either in the spacer plate gaskets where, where it looks like it's been cut away between channels. That's another type of orifice where uh, we allow fluid to fill a passage just to keep it filled so that when we do need to pressurize it, we can pressurize it quickly and easily. So we fed into converter feed and decrease. Decrease fluid goes back to the back side of the slide, pushing it again the spring pressure which decreases our volume of fluid. Now we push the pressure regulator valve down against this PCS line fluid. Where does that come from? Pressure control solenoid. Yeah good pressure control solenoid. Now the pressure control solenoid has this NH which means normally high. We need to talk about what that term means because it can be confusing. Uh, because you've seen pressure control solenoids or on-off solenoids referenced as normally on or normally open or normally closed. You've seen that NO and NC in the past. Uh, well, they don't use that on this transmission. They talk about it being normally high or normally low. And so what's the solenoid, right? Pardon me? This is the solenoid, right? It, it is a solenoid, but the solenoid is controlling, it, it's fed what fluid? The uh, AFL. Yeah, good. Here's our solenoid use my drawing and there's a passage here which is labeled EX for exhaust. For exhaust. So we have AFL, actuated feed limit fluid, that is flowing to the cell. Now the actuated feed limit fluid comes from what valve? You guys know this. The AFL. the AFL valve. That's why it's called AFL fluid. The actuated feed limit valve limits AF fluid, actuated feed fluid. And it limits it because of the limitations of our solenoids. If the pressure gets too high, it'll overcome the ability of the solenoids to block off or to control flow. So the pressure has to be limited. And that's what the function of the AFL valve is. So the AFL fluid is feeding all of our solenoids. And then it's feeding it either to exhaust or into a, I'm going to call it a control circuit of some sort. So it's either flowing into the control circuit or it's flowing out exhaust. And the solenoid is going to control that. Now, when it's normally high, what they're referring to is the pressure in the control circuit. The compression in the control circuit is going to be normally high, in this case, when the solenoid is off, de-energized. Off meaning de-energized. The picture says normally high and what's on. Yeah, ignore that picture for a minute. Okay. And it's going to be a, a solenoid that, excuse me, I don't want to go there yet. Uh, when the solenoid is energized, let's see, I'll try to do this so it's not confusing. So this is the control circuit we're talking about. When it's de energized, it's going to be high on a normally high solenoid. And when it's energized, the control circuit pressure is going to be low. So at a normally high solenoid, that's how it's going to be affected. And it's kind of important that you understand that. On a normally low solenoid, the control circuit's going to be low when it's de-energized and going to be high when it's energized. And we use both on these transmissions. We use normally high and normally low solenoids. 
Um, so in, in answer to your, uh, to your point there, why does it say that? I saw the same thing and wondered the same thing. What are they trying to say there? So it says it's on. They're not telling us right now um, whether it's... Um, energized or Right, they're saying on, which suggests it's energized, right. which means that our PCS line pressure will be low in this case, on a normally high solenoid. They're not really specifying that. So I, I'm not sure why they put that on there. Uh, it is confusing, but ignore that because it's, it's, it doesn't really help you understand how that system works. Um, the solenoid is not an on-off solenoid, by the way. What type of solenoid is it? Yeah, what was the term? Variable bleed because it can be it can bleed uh, fluid off to exhaust or into the control circuit based on how long it is on and off pulse width modulation. So these are not just on or off; they're pulse width modulated solenoids. Um, I gotta fix it. So knowing that we're feeding it actuator feed loop fluid. Uh, the fluid, when this is, is off, the fluid's going to be able to flow into the PCS circuit, which is going to cause our PCS fluid pressure to do what? It's going to rise, because this is normally high, so when it's off, this fluid's going to be, this PCS fluid's going to be high. If we increase the PCS fluid, it's going to push our pressure regulator valve down, which is going to block the flow of fluid into what passage? Uh, line. Uh, well, I mean, we're pushing the block then at number four, like when it comes, it goes all the way down. Uh, oh, wait, is that you're talking about exhaust? No, no. If our PCS fluid goes up, it's yeah. going to push this regulator valve down, which is going to block the flow of fluid into this passage here, this decrease passage. And that's going to cause our pressure to do what? Our line pressure to do what? Go up. Going to go up. Going to go up. Increase. So out of our pump, we have line pressure coming out of there. That line pressure is going to go up as we push back on the valve and restrict the flow of line fluid into decrease. And that line pressure is going to go up based on the amount of bleed into the PCS line circuit, which is going to be pulse width modulated with the primary input being what? No. Primary input to the TECM being what? Oh, um, uh, throttle position. Throttle position. Because when we step on the throttle, we're putting a heavy load on the transmission, on all the components in the transmission, all the apply components. So we want to keep them from slipping. So to do that, we increase the line pressure. So that's what you'll see happen when you look at pressure. As you push on the throttle, you're going to see pressure go up uh, as you're driving down the road. A um, couple other things to point out here. Notice that our PCS fluid, our PCS line fluid, goes up to our uh, isolator valve. The isolator valve in this case is kind of used as an accumulator to dampen the pressure pulses and it just gives us a more precise control of pressure. They, they've done that on a lot of circuits in this transmission. You guys had the spacer plate apart and you should have noticed there was a bunch of little accumulators in there. It looked like little pistons, spring-loaded pistons. Those were, those were just accumulators, but they weren't accumulators in the sense of the one, two, and three, four accumulator on the 4L60. These were accumulators just to kind of moderate or flatten out the pressure pulses from the pump. Because every time this pump is rotating, you only got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mains. And every time you create that pressure, you create a pressure pulse seven times per revolution. And this is just kind of dampening them out. It's interesting, when they first came out with the 4L60, when it was called the 700R4, there were only like, I think, eight veins in the pump. And they eventually added more veins to the pump because those eight veins were causing noise line concerns. Uh, because of the pressure pulse was created. So I think they eventually went up to, uh, I forget how many, maybe 12 veins, I, I don't remember now. But they increased the number of veins. Now we're back to using uh, uh, 
less veins, uh, but we do have all those little accumulators in there to help control pressure pulses. Republican plan to pass tax moves forward. Um, so a couple other things to point out here. Uh, our PCS fluid goes over to this other little accumulator, that's the one in the spacer plate. It goes through a number three orifice to feed uh, our, our PCS line circuit. Um, and notice this little slot, it says slot and gasket. And that's going over to exhaust. Why do you suppose that's there? You guys know this, we've talked about it. Because notice it's just, it's just going over to exhaust here. Well, to keep the exhaust built? Not in this case, what, what's it doing? Is that when you uh, like slam on the gas and then let off real quick, the pressure has to let go? No, but you are listening, Robert, because we did talk about that, referring to a harsh one-two upshift in the, in the 4L60. Uh, but this is just a place to, for air to get out. That's all. You know, it's just an air bleed, basically. And again, you see this kind of strategy throughout these transmissions. Uh, so our fluid goes to our pump, or as a line, line fluid from the pump, it goes to our pressure regulator valve. It feeds two circuits, decrease and convert a feed. Uh, notice that we also have a couple more orifices here going out to exhaust to let air out. Um, what else is important here to point out? We have a blow off valve here, line over pressure blow off valves to keep our line pressure from getting too high. If the line pressure gets too high, it can damage components. Plus it costs us fuel economy too. Uh, but the real concern about that the function of that blow-off valve is to keep things from getting damaged. This pump is capable of, punching, of, of pumping much more fluid than we need to operate our transmission. Uh, so, you know, we have ways to control the pressure as we just discussed, but just in case something does go wrong uh, and we start pumping excessive fluid pressures, which could break clutches, uh, could damage applied components, and solenoids, damage our tecum, uh, all of those things. Um, we have that blow up valve that's going to keep that from, from happening. Uh, the pressure can, if pressure gets too high, it can actually balloon the converter. As heavy as that converter is and those, as heavy as that metal is, it does expand normally. It flexes back and forth normally, uh, which is why that pilot on the converter that rides inside the crankshaft it has to be able to move inside that crankshaft pilot hole. If it can't move uh, when the converter expands, it's going to apply pressure to the crankshaft, which is going to apply pressure to the thrust bearings of the crankshaft, which could lead to uh, damage to the thrust bearings. So normally these converters will expand three thousandths, uh, but if pressure gets too high or if the converter gets overheated, it can expand more, and that's when damage can occur. So the blow-off valve is going to keep that from happening. If you start reaching maximum pressure, uh, you're going to hear that thing buzzing away, usually in the, in, the, in the transmission. That's going to be your clue when you hear that buzzing noise, that maybe your pressure's getting too hot. So the fluid's going to convert a feed as well. <coughs> um, and we want to talk a little bit about what's going on there, because that's also fairly consistent with our 4L60. And I guess I'll go to one of those big schematics. And I want to go to park. That's first gear. That's first gear with engine braking. Remember they're different? Yeah. It's neutral. All right, so, wow, that looks complex, huh? So let's find our pressure regulator valve here. 
There's our pressure regulator valve. There's our line fluid feeding into our converter feed. And you can just follow the arrows to kind of get an idea as to which way the fluid's going. And that's very useful sometimes because you're gonna see situations where it looks like this fluid's flowing in one direction when it really isn't. But the arrows will help you determine that. Uh, notice that our converter fleet feed fluid goes up to this compensator feed. That circuit is there just to fill up circuits to get them ready to be pressurized. So that orifice that you see is kind of limiting that pressure to about nine pounds per square inch. Uh, that orifice plus the leaks in the circuit keep it to that, approximately that pressure. That's our compensator feed fluid. <coughs> That's something new on these transmissions. So a converter feed continues on over up through our face, spacer plate um, through uh, passage 4B, I think that is, <laughs> 4B or 4A, 4B, I guess. Um, and then it goes to two locations. I actually know it goes to one location past our orifice number five, I believe it is. It may have been eight. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's, it's going past, uh, past number eight orifice, I believe it is. Uh, and then we're going to come back over to, and this is how you follow it. You're just going to follow these passages goes over to our TCC control valve, uh, where it's currently just passing past the valve. Everyone okay with that? And it goes into what circuit? TCC. Uh, TCC release. So it's going, here we are, convert a P, going into TCC release. Because, pardon? We are going to go into cooler P2. Yeah, you're right. That's a ply going into there. And that's what I want you to see. We're going to follow that back. Because first, our release fluid is going to flow over to our torque converter. And let's go follow this over. Fun stuff. So it's flowing back into our, our torque converter housing, or cover. Um, it's flowing through a passage in our down, drill down through the center of our turbine shaft. See that little lip seal right there? Do you guys remember that? Where's that? Inside the Liam, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the lip seal inside the torque converter. Uh, so fluid can't flow back this way because it's going to be sealed against that lip. It's going to flow down the shaft in between the pressure plate and the torque converter housing. And it's going to push the pressure plate away from the housing. So the TCC is what? It's release, right? It's off. The fluid's going to flow around the release pressure plate and back into the converter housing. And then it's going to flow back in between the turbine shaft and the uh, the uh, bushing, no, not the bushing, I think it's going to be uh, actually, no, I think it is in between the bushing. So it's kind of flowing around the two and then it's flowing back into the release circuit somewhere here, I found it, right here. Yeah, right here. It's going to flow into our release circuit. That release fluid is going to flow back to, back out of the housing, back into our uh, valve body and back to our control valve and from there it's going to pull flow into the cooler feed circuit so the cooler feed fluid is going to flow where cooler. to the cooler obviously and you can follow that over to the cooler going back through the uh, spacer plate assembly 309 and back out of the transmission into a pipe. Usually when fluid flows through a pipe, they will show that with rounded corners, whereas if it's a sharp corner, then it's 
usually flowing uh, you know, through passages in the case. So it flows to the cooler, gives off heat energy, and then flows to the lube circuit in the transmission. And this is typical of most of our transmissions. When the TCC is released, fluid from the pressure regulator valve flows through the converter feed passage to a torque converter control valve into the release circuit, back up to the converter, where it's absorbing heat energy from the converter. When the TCC is not applied, that's when the converter is going to generate most of its heat. So we're going to absorb that heat energy, carry it back out uh, to the apply circuit, back to that TCC control valve, and then to the cooler circuit, and then after it goes to the cooler, it goes to lube to lubricate our transmission. So you can see our lube fluid goes in a couple of places. One is down through the center of the planetary gear sets, so it's going down through that input shaft again uh, to through passages to lubricate our planetary gear sets, and it's also going to lubricate our final drive assembly. Remember that tube in the in the oil dam that you had? That's where it's going yeah. to lubricate those bearings. So that's what the TCC released. So you can take a look at any one of the valves and solenoids and <coughs> kind of follow what's going, what's going to happen, what's going to make them work. So let's do that with the TCC, because I'd like you to look at this, what changes when we apply the TCC. So keeping in mind, let's take a look at that TCC control valve again. The TCC control valve is currently in the spring-loaded position. What's this exhaust for? These exhausts, what's that for? Fluid can't back up behind it in the hydraulic bucket. Good, excellent, yeah, because fluid's always leaking by these valves, remember, it has to leak by the lamps to keep them clean and to cool, and we need a place for that fluid to go, and that's why the exhaust is there. So the TCC is in its spring-loaded position right now. The TCC is released. In order to apply it, we need to have converted feed fluid feeding into the apply circuit instead of the release circuit. Does that make sense, everybody? So to do that, we need to do what to the valve? Against spring, pressure. against spring pressure. So as we fluids acting here, you have a regulated apply and a pressure control solenoid TCC. Let's take a look at that and see what is actually happening. To do that, we're going to have to go to a, a gear in which the TCC is applied. When we move the valve over, the converter feed now goes right to the cooler circuit. So it's bypassing the torque converter. And we do the same thing in the 4L60. Uh, and you can actually see this. If you teed a pressure gauge into the cooler line, so you take disconnect the cooler line, put a T in there and connect a pressure gauge to it, and uh, look at the pressure with the TCC not applied and then com command the TCC to apply, what you'll see is a little blip in the pressure as we change positions, as this valve moves. And the 